Hello, my name is Monique Bosch, and I'm going to be sharing with you a PowerPoint presentation I put together with designs for school gardens, community gardens, and farms, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a one-shot deal because <laughs> I do go on and on, and I just want to get this out there, and if I try for perfection, it ain't, it ain't gonna happen. So here it is, I'll put on my glasses and start sharing it with you. Designing gardens for communities, large and small, young and old. The first slide to share with you is the work we did at the Compass School, which was in Rhode Island. It's a public chartered school, and it does a beautiful job teaching young people about our ecology, working with the land, nature, and now more and more growing organic healthy food. So this is what we started with. We took a satellite image of the, the farm. In fact, the school sits on 20 acres, historic farm. And as you can see, uh, it's kept cleared by the fallow. And so we wanted to find a way to reintroduce more food growing and bring some of that farm back to life. So the image on the right shows you the work we did with the design. And you can see here, we focused on one particular area. And on the very right, that is the, the large historic barn. And then there is the, what we'll call the shed on the left of that. The space in between, we figured was the perfect spot to design a garden. So we came up with this design, a lot of raised beds, and we felt it was really going to be a wonderful center focus right in the middle of the campus. Of course, then we did a soil test and found out that the lead levels were off the charts. The reason for that, this barn used to have a number of antique tractors parked in front. And of course, that's where they would fill them with, at that time, leaded gasoline. And so we quickly had to change our plan that shows you how important it is to do a soil test. So now we're keeping that area beautifully clean, as you can see, and we move the garden to along the road. And this had a number of actually beneficial factors. Number one, it was much more visible to people coming by. And so that became an outreach garden, which is supporting school gardens throughout the area and is running an internship in the summer, as well as a summer camp for children. Of course, we also ran into a shade problem. Uh, these are some white pine that were taking a lot of the sun. So we cut them off and turned them into the bases of tables. We then started having volunteer days where we invited students and their parents to come and help us prep the areas. And they really did build the farm. Of course, it wasn't without some controversy. The neighbors were concerned that this might not be attractive, especially when we received funding for a seasonal high tunnel. Uh, they were worried that it would be an eyesore. So we came up with a drawing. We showed how the plantings and gardens would really mask any high tunnel that might be behind there. This appeared on the website and certainly convinced the neighbors that there was nothing to worry about. The, the volunteers, in this case, students from Compass School, built this wonderful hexagonal garden bed, which has a history, which of course I'll tell you all about. And they quickly filled it with soil and very soon after were planting. And uh, wonderful mentorship between the students in fifth grade mentoring the kindergartners while they're busy planting peas for the season. The actual hexagonal garden shape came about a while before that. In this case, I did want to share with you, these are 31 hexagonal garden beds that were built by volunteers. A wonderful nonprofit organization came, all high school students, and helped build, and of course they're called Build On. This is in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and this is at our urban farm, which of course I'll also tell you all about. But I wanted to share with you how this hexagonal garden bed design really took off. Each one of these garden beds went into a daycare center in people's homes throughout the city. 
So a uh, very proud day for all the members of Build On. This is actually where the hexagonal shape came to be. This is Discovery School. You can see here now it's time for harvesting. So the interns had a wonderful idea. This is a science-based school, Discovery School. So they came up with the concept of molecular shaped garden beds. And that's how this hexagonal garden shape came to be. Here we're moving on. This is the senior center in Westport and they wanted to build a garden. So we were scrummaging around and found the most beautiful Belgian blocks in the woods. So we took these building blocks and created these raised beds. It's really easy to access. And as you can see, the seniors have been loving this garden. Every year it gets better and better and more and more beautiful. Here's another community garden we did, again, for Bridgeport. And this was a uh, very simple, just to give you an idea of how, sometimes I'll take one sheet of paper and figure it out, do a simple drawing, figure out how much wood we would need. You can see the results. And you say, wow, it's so spread out, there's all this room. Well, the reason for that was we wanted to keep it open so that there was, it was very accessible. Right nearby are a number of Asian restaurants. And we were hoping that they would utilize these garden beds for their restaurants, but we weren't sure. And they were very quickly utilized and appreciated. And now there are more garden beds and it's, it's really taken off. Here is the Bridgeport Public Library. So they wanted us to come up with a small garden that would be suitable for children. Here's what we came up with. We modeled it after the Michelle Obama garden that she had just put in in the White House. And it has been a, a wonderful garden for a number of, of people who have really appreciated this very central location to grow food for the community. This is another site, Marina Village. And you can see it, it was just a, a bare plot of land but not for long. We extended these garden beds because it was so well utilized and there was already a waiting list after half a year. So we came back and you can see the back area we also filled with these garden beds. The, the young man on the left helped us build these gardens. It was in his neighborhood. And we met him two years later, there he is on the right, helping build his school garden. So how successful are these school gardens? Do we do them? Well, we thought we would host a school garden workshop, open it to everyone. This is Annie Farrell looking at this poster that we handed around. We had 400 people come to that day. And that convinced us that we needed to focus on school gardens, which we did. This is one of the first school gardens we built at Waltersville School in Bridgeport. What is wrong with this picture? Well, a couple of things we learned. Number one, you do not want to have grass between your garden beds because it's going to be impossible to mow and keep up. Number two, plant the beds closer together so you have less space to keep the grass out of. So we actually came back and covered the whole lawn with weed control fabric and laid wood chips on top. We do replenish the wood chips every year, but it keeps down the weeds and allows us to grow as much food as possible. But you can see it's a lot of space there that is wasted. So we, we learned from that and moved on. Although this garden, as you can see, very successful, a lot of wonderful food being grown. We would come with the interns every week on a designated time. There was a summer school there and the students would come out and help us harvest and help us enjoy the harvest. And it also inspired some wonderful art. Another school, again, a very simple, small area. All of the parents came out that day and usually it would be a few of us showing the students how to plant these garden beds. I laid down these seedlings, turned around and all of the parents knew exactly what to do and they were off and planted those garden beds as quick as can be and have been working and at that successful garden ever since. 
another school, a very odd shape. Can we make this into something? This is the design that we came up with. And shortly afterwards, we had this beautiful garden and some very enthusiastic students who loved the garden. Again, they look out at it through their windows every day, which is another interesting fact. If you're building a school garden and you can have it viewable by students, it will be much more successful. Here we tried it on some asphalt. And if you have really excellent soil and you replenish it with compost every year, you can grow some wonderful food. You can't get the stakes in very far, but you can certainly do justice to have a nice food growing area. Multicultural Magnet School. Now we're really getting down to figuring out designs that work in small amounts of space and requiring as little upkeep as possible. So you can see these two gardens on the right and you can see all of this is wood chips and we have lawn around the outside. So no mowing or upkeep needs to be done on the inside. And here is that garden short time later. And before you know it, the students are there volunteering to help us plant, nurture, and harvest. A tiny little space in this school, Tisdale School, and we filled it quickly with raised garden beds. Again, not a lot of area that required upkeep. And the students crammed in there for this photo opportunity really seem to enjoy this garden. Here's another one, Caesar Battaglia School. Again, what do you do? Where do you build that garden? Well, you use this, the southern facing wall as uh, protection from wind and heats up quickly. And you can see we're using that two U's, I guess we'll call it, shape again, so that you only have to add wood chips for the pathways in this area here. And the mowing is only done on the outside. This was the garden day. Most of the time we managed to build the entire garden in one day. This is actually the principal of the school who was having a, a if I may, field day making that garden happen. This is another build in a day garden. This is at Curiel School and we had so many volunteers that day and uh, all different ages came out, filled the garden bed and here we are five weeks later harvesting lettuce for what became to be an annual salad day, which of course the students totally loved. And here we are in the cafeteria, the interns working with the students to make these wonderful salads for everyone in the school. So who's doing all this work, you might ask? We have interns working with us and they've been working with us since we started building school gardens in 2010. And here you can see them, they maintain the 25 school gardens in Bridgeport. They teach the students everything from worm composting to seed starting. Which brings me to this. It was an abandoned strip mall for 25 years. It sat idle with this fence around it. We came up with this design, 100, 32 by four foot raised beds. You can see the one on the left was the first. And then on the right, we looked at the slopes and decided to change the direction of some of the garden beds. We designed garden beds where we knew the greenhouse was going to go. In this case, we're calling it seasonal high tunnel. Also funded by USDA NRCS. And everything else pretty much stayed the same. Uh, so we had a wonderful groundbreaking, October 20th, 2012, and we had a wonderful group of people coming out. We had already put up this shed, designed it, ordered it, and they built it in one day. That was uh, post woodworking out of New Hampshire. And soon afterwards, we organized field days. This is one that we did. We had 100 students there that day. This is our volunteer chef. Chef Charlton, who came and taught the students how to make stone soup. And we set up eight stations, which the interns ran. So we had everything from measuring sugar content in food, which scared a lot of students when they found out how much sugar was in their yogurt or chocolate milk or worse, Coca-Cola, uh, 
We also explored the different plants and had students try various herbs and things to eat. Very popular, the wash station, and of course, the wonderful harvest at the end of it. Again, it was all about community, and we certainly did build community. And this really became, you can see the bread basket there, it became the hub supporting all of the school gardens around the city. That star is the nutrition center. And the nutrition center there, thanks to Maura O'Malley, agreed to buy all food that we grew at the farm and serve it in school cafeterias. We also had a number of support days. These are teachers from the surrounding schools that came and here we are in that beautiful shed and we would work with teachers on using their school garden in the curriculum. This is one of the last volunteer days of the season. Of course, we made a beautiful soup with the harvest. You can see that wonderful shed in the background and indeed was burned to the ground, arson. So it was heartbreaking to say the least. No one was injured, it was empty because it was before the season started. But there's curtains that one of the interns had made. It did bring the community together. This is one week later. You can see behind their new shed, thanks to post woodworking, quickly brought it and put it together. This is the mayor honoring the day and the volunteers that came to make the farm, what I would say, whole again. It did change. It became a symbol of resilience for the neighborhood. And it brought even more people together to want to grow food and support that garden. There's a lot more I could say, but moving forward, because this is about garden design, um, this is a, a fun design we were asked to do in Rhode Island, where they wanted to beautify a very simple and small area around the school. So we came up with some designs uh, where we would take a photo of what was there, which was pretty much grass and some trees, and come up with designs. So this is the front of the school, and this is some ideas we came up with behind the school to, to make it more relating to nature. Fast forward, we're back in Bridgeport, and this is the Housatonic Community College. And the top left corner, you can see the efforts, this is year two, of teachers building a faculty garden, growing food and inspiring really the whole school population to want to build an edible campus. And we actually were uh, tabling at um, Steam Fest to see if there was any interest. And we actually got that day 53 names of interns that want to work on these, this edible campus. And we were well underway. We had our designs done, all approved. You can see the food growing here all around the outside of the cafeteria. We're going to have wonderful pollinator gardens here uh, and fruit trees and again, production gardens and trees down here. I became really excited by incorporating permaculture design. This is a slope going down. So these are all beds built on contour to catch the rainwater as it's flowing down. And this is what we would call a nut and fruit tree guild based on permaculture principles. At the same time that this was going on, I was working with a wonderful nonprofit group in the Berkshires called Greenagers. The design that we're working on now are these contour beds being formed here and this demonstration garden where all food will be grown for food pantries. So very exciting. We now have interns working there. Uh, we're keeping our distance as much as we can. I'm learning even more about different concepts. Again, now we're doing a large scale working with the contours to collect rainwater and planting really interesting fruit and nut trees throughout. Uh, here is the demonstration garden that we're working on. 
again, based on permaculture principles. Uh, we've got some hugelkultur gardens here, and we're now planting vegetables in these gardens. We're trying to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, saplings of hazelnut, pawpaw, all sorts of native flowers, chestnut, sea berry, cherries, walking onions. Very interesting selection. So that's where we are right now. There's a lot of work to be done. I'm looking forward to going back to Housatonic Community College and carrying on with that project. For me, it's all about the people involved in all of these projects and seeing how they have embraced these projects and really made them their own. So I guess for on closing, I would just want to say thank you for your interest and if you ever need any help building one of these gardens or would just like me to look at them or offer any advice, I would certainly love to be involved. Um, so thank you and uh, happy designing and food growing.